Amen. Praise the Lord. Many folks do not take God seriously, especially nowadays. Amen. And all of you looking around, all of you been watching the news, not only here in America, but across the world. Many folks do not take God seriously. They joke about him, misuse his name as a figure of speech, or reserve him for situations that parallel fire alarms in case of emergency, break glass. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. That fear is the fear of reverence and respect and meshes with the biblical teaching that for the believer, God is Abba, Father. Amen? We do not dread his rejection, for we are completely accept accepted once we are in Christ, but we stand in awe of him, and we are aware that he lovingly disciplines us. Amen? Some Christians are like the man in the following true story. C.R. Smith was one of the founders of American Airlines. And he once made a stopover in Nashville, Tennessee. When he did, he found two desks in the American Airlines corridor of the airport. On one, a phone was ringing away. Sitting at the other, with his feet propped up, was a man reading his newspaper. Smith walked up to him and said, your phone is ringing. That's reservations. I'm, I'm making it, the man replied. Furious Smith, uh, Smith uh, walked over the desk, picked up the phone, and began talking to a man who urgently needed to get to California. Smith rattled off the, the schedule with, from memory to the man and hung up. The man from maintenance couldn't believe it. Say, that was pretty good, he said. Do you work for American? Smith said, yes, I do, he answered, and you used to. Wow. We must consider the reality that God does as he pleases. That he does not need us, but is complete in himself. And that is his all-knowing and all-powerful attributes guarantee him success in all that he purposes to do. Today we are going to contemplate the eternal God. Amen. Praise God. Psalm 147 reads, 147 verse 5 reads, Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Amen? Let me repeat that again. Great is our Lord. We got to understand that we can't put God in our small little box, in our, bub in our bubble. Amen? Because great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Amen? It's infinite. Can you imagine? No, we cannot imagine his infinite wisdom. Amen? He is infinite. His understanding, right, is higher than our understanding. His ways are higher than our ways. Amen? You see, that term is infinite is a good definition of what we mean by eternal God. Amen? The human mind cannot really conceive of the infinite. We can think of a long time, a great amount of power, or a mass of knowledge, but nothing we deal with the daily life is limitless. We can believe God is limitless, but we cannot truly grasp all that this entails. Amen. Why? Because God is eternal. He is infinite. Amen. His understanding is infinite. The eternality and limitlessness of God is beyond our ability to picture in our own minds. Yet we can embrace these truths 
of scripture without limited understanding and worship God all the more zealously as we become overwhelmed with who God is. Amen. Although every attribute of God can be extended outward to an eternal degree, God's eternity, brothers and sisters, can be better understood by looking at it from several angles. The first one is our creaturely limitations. We got we got to understand that we're we are human beings are limited, but God is infinite. Amen. You think you're so smart? Your smartness is limited. God is all knowing. He is all powerful. Amen. He is all wise. That is who God is, but we are not. Amen. Praise God. We have creaturely limitations. We should not expect to fully grasp these deep things about God because we are not infinite. Amen. Psalms 36, verse 5 and 6 reads, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Amen. Contemplate that. Meditate on it. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. And thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountain. Amen. Thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Thou preservest man and beast. You gotta understand that God is in control, amen, over everything. He is sovereign, amen. He, he preserves man and beast, amen. Turn with me to Romans chapter 11, verse 33. This verse is so deep that when we read it, we typically glass over it, amen. And it reads, all the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Amen. Psalm 139 verse 4 through 6 says, For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest all together. Hallelujah. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hands upon me. Hallelujah. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. I cannot grasp it uh, of the deepness and knowledge of God. Amen. The Son, His work is, is unsearchable. Hallelujah. We cannot attain it. Amen. The eternality of God. The infiniteness of God. Amen. And of his knowledge and of his wisdom. Isaiah 40 verse 28 tells us and asks this question. Has that not known? Amen. Has that not known? Has that not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Amen. Neither is weary. He is not a weak God. He is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is almighty. He is all knowing. Amen. He is ever present. Amen. He is a transcendent God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is neither weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Again, talking about the eternality of the wisdom and understanding of God over our lives. He knows us more than we know ourselves. He knows the very count of the hair that was on your head. All the hair that I lost, he knew that count. He knew what I had. Amen. That's how deep he knows us. If you think you truly grasp the Trinity or the nature of God, you have an arrogance problem. You have a pride problem if you think you truly grasp the Trinity or the nature of God. We can understand some of the facts God has revealed about himself, but not to the extent of those facts. Amen. Number two, God is eternal when it comes to time. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, have you heard of that, that saying that, that, that God 
will, will answer his, our prayers in his own timing, that we got to trust in God's timing. Amen. Time is a limited duration measured by succession, either of time or motion. Amen. God has no need of time, brothers and sisters, be, but he observes time in his dealings with creation. Amen. Time and space are created entities. Amen. You got to understand that we did not create time. We did not create the clock. God created it, right? There are created entities in space, the universe. God created the universe in space. Amen. Turn with me to Romans 8, 28. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. This means that although God is eternal, if we use a time reference, God is outside of the realm of time. Hallelujah. He not only knows what will happen, but he is present all the times at once. Amen. Hallelujah. That is our God. Praise the Lord. He is our God. If you cannot understand this, brothers and sisters, remember our first point. If a sparrow flew to the Atlantic Ocean and filled his little beak with water and then flew all the way across the United States to the Pacific Ocean and emptied his beak, then rested for 1,000 years, then he flew back to the Atlantic, filled his beak again, flew to the Pacific, emptied his beak, and continued this process until the entire Atlantic Ocean was emptied into the Pacific Ocean, resting for a thousand years between trips, and then put all the water back after he was done, not one day of eternity would have passed. Amen? Wow! Wow! Praise God! That is the God that we serve. The eternal God. Amen. The creator of the universe. That always existed outside of time, but works in human time for in his creation. Hallelujah. We are eternal in the sense that we will live forever with him. Amen. Once we leave this earth. But God exists outside of the realm of time. So if we use this created entity, time, as a reference, we can say that there was a time when there was no time, but God was there before that time and always is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, Hallelujah. You got to understand the, the magnitude of the eternality, the eternity of God. Amen. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou art God. That is who God is. He is everlasting from everlasting. Hallelujah. Thou art God. He is our God. Hallelujah. Revelation verse 1 through 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Hallelujah. Saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Hallelujah. Do you feel well, church? I know I do. Hallelujah. The greatness and the mightiness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three, God is infinite when it comes to space. Amen. Man thinks that they can travel space as far as they can, but they cannot comprehend that what God has created. They cannot comprehend, they cannot really comprehend time and space because God created. Hallelujah. Amen. God's substance surpasses all spatial limitations. Again, again, we human beings, we are limited. But God is unlimited. He is infinite, brothers and sisters. He does not have a dimension or size. 1 Kings 8.27 says, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have 
building. Amen. God cannot be contained in our own little box, brothers and sisters. God cannot be contained in our own little world in our mind, brothers and sisters. God cannot be contained. He is everywhere. He is ever present. He is holy. He is mighty. He is omnipresent, brothers and sisters. Amen. The earth is his footstool. And we are his. We belong to God. We are his property. This body is not your own. It belongs to God. Amen. And every creature in here, we belong to him. Isaiah 66 verse 1 says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Hallelujah. Where is the house that you built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? We, you cannot contain God just in the church and the four walls. God exists. Hallelujah. His whole entire earth and everything is his footstool. Hallelujah. God is everywhere. It speaks about God's eternality and mightiness and omnipresence who God is, brothers and sisters. We are not alone. God is with us because this earth is his footstool. Hallelujah. Or what is the place of my rest? <laughs> wow. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you this, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Amen. We are His. The earth is His footstool. We cannot contain Him in our little box. Amen. If we try to contain them in our little box, we have created a different God. We have reserved to paganism and idolatry. We cannot contain a mighty God that is sovereign and in control, that the earth is his footstool. Amen? Acts chapter 7, verse 48 to 49 says, How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, Hallelujah. As saith the prophet, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? It cannot contain me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Again, God is emphasizing his mightiness. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere, brothers and sisters. We cannot contain him in our own little bubble. Amen. He exists all the time, outside of time. Amen? More than one universe can exist at in the same time. The spiritual can exist within and around the physical, brothers and sisters. Most of what, what we see is actually force, not matter. Though God is everywhere, he is transcendent. Amen? What do you mean by transcendency? R.C. Sproul tells us transcendence, and I quote, transcendence means literally to climb across. It is defined as exceeding the usual limits. When we speak of the transcendence of God, we're talking about the sense in which God is above and beyond us. He is higher than the world. He has absolute power over the world. The world has no power over him. Transcendence describes God in his consuming majesty. He is exalted loftiness. Amen. Again, we cannot contain God in our own bubble. We cannot contain God in our little box. Because the earth is his footstool and heaven is his throne. Amen. He is sovereign and in control. Hallelujah. He is infinite. He has an infinite cut above everything else. End quote. The holiness of God, page 55. But it also means separateness. Amen. Hear that? Separateness. God is the being who all who has always existed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Everything else is created. Amen. Do you hear that? Amen. He is the creator and above his creation. He is much greater than the sum total of all he has made. More powerful than the 
combined power of every atom combined, more eternal than the universe, brothers and sisters, more creative than all men from all time put together. He transcends all. Amen? He transcends all. That is our God. He is our God. Amen? God is present in different ways. Number one, he is present everywhere, omnipresent. Speaking about his omnipresence, Psalms 139, verse 7 through 10 tells us, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? This is very tough. This is a very, uh, 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 the, the people of Israel uh, often uh, recite this, this scripture, right? Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Talking about the presence, the omnipresence of God. Right? That God is everywhere. Wherever we at, God is there. Amen? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. And if I take the, the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me. And thy right hand shall hold me. Amen. Even if we're drowning in the sea, Jesus is there to pull us out like he did to, with Peter. I know he lacked faith is the reason why he kept his eyes uh, from, 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 from the prize, which is Jesus Christ. Right? And he, dr and he drowned because he lacked little faith. But when, but when Peter finally realized that he needed God's help, he said, Lord, save me. Save me. And Jesus is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness and to deliver us from what we have put ourselves into. Even in the depths of the sea, Jesus is there. Amen? Jesus is there. Even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Amen? Number two, his localized presence in heaven. And number three, he specially indwells the believer. Amen? Colossians 1.27 says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of those mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We have a hope, which is in Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. We have a privilege to have Christ in us. Amen. The Holy Spirit of Christ in us. Amen. Our hope of glory. An eternal God can give all of himself to each of his children. He does not distribute himself that each may have a part, but to each one he gives all of himself as fully as if there were no others. Amen. Praise God. That is, that is who God is. Praise the Lord. And number four, A.W. Tozer said, and I quote, When we come to know Jesus Christ, we are indwelt by all three persons in the Trinity. In a way, we were not indwelt before we were saved. Amen? Praise God. Jesus and the Father are supping with us now. When we accepted Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and dwelt in, your, in, in, in you, Jesus and the Father, sup with you. Amen? This great God we, we serve is eternal, brothers and sisters. It's eternal. So eternal we cannot contain him in our little box. Like I was saying. We cannot contain him in the temple. Because the whole earth is his footstool. Amen? And every, every single creature, everything that we see and, and hear is God's. He is large enough to fill the universe and be young and personal enough to live within your being. He's a personable God. It speaks about his transcendence. Right? The eternal God is big enough to
to fill the universe and beyond it personable enough to live within your being. Amen? Wow. Do you personally know this God? To you, those that are listening to Facebook Live, do you know Jesus? Do you know God as your Lord and Savior? Amen? Do you have a relationship with Him? I mean, and I mean, do you really, really, really have a personal relationship with God? Is Jesus really your Lord and Savior of your life? I mean, do you know Him through His Word? Do you have a relationship with Him? why Jesus died. To remove the sin that separates you from God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. If you don't know Jesus, it is by faith and by His grace alone that you can be saved. Repent. Seek His forgiveness. Amen. Turn to Jesus Christ. Put your trust in Him. Believe Him. Confess your sins to Him. Confess Him as your Lord and Savior of your life. And believe it in your heart. That God raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Let us be stand this morning. Let us pray. I open the altar of prayer this morning. And those on Facebook Live, find a, a, a special closet, a special prayer place. Close the door behind you. Just you and God. Amen. And talk to him. Pray to Him. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for, for today's message, Father. We praise you, Father, for everything that you are doing, what you're about to do now, Father. For those on Facebook Live that, that are listening right now, and those that will listen to it later, Father, I pray for their salvation. I pray, Father, because they are lost. They don't know you. They don't know your Son, Jesus Christ. They have lived lives of... of of, of, of contemplating if they should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or not. They've been uh, squandering their lives. They've been, they've been uh, wasting their money, living uh, wild lives, Father. And, and I pray, Father, that, that, that as they come to a place that, to come back home, to come back to you, Father, let today be the day that they return to you, Father. Because I know that you're waiting with their arms open wide. Waiting on that door, Father, as the as the prodigal father was waiting for his son, Father. And I know, Lord God, that you're waiting for each person that's listened to today's message, Father, to come home to you, Father. Because it is with you that they belong, Father. And I ask, Father, that you cause them to repent of their sins and seek your forgiveness, O oh God. To turn to you, to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, hallelujah, and to believe it in their heart that God raised them from the dead, and they shall be saved, and they shall be transformed, and their hearts shall be transformed, and their minds will be renewed, hallelujah, Father, and I pray for their salvation, I pray for their deliverance from whatever they find themselves into, Father, I know, Father, that I pray, Father, that, that they know that you are with them, hallelujah, because this is earth, the earth, and this is his footstool. That means that you are everywhere, and you understand, and you know what's going on. You're not surprised by the sins that they have committed, because they are lost. Hallelujah. We All of us, we were lost without you, but we were found in Jesus Christ the Lord. And now the Lord dwells in us, and now 
you, Father, and now Jesus and the Holy Ghost dwells inside of us. Hallelujah. And we're thankful for that, Father. So I pray for those lost souls, Father. I pray for their salvation, oh God, because this world is crumbling down. There's many people that have rejected your son, Jesus Christ, and that is sad, Father. But I pray for those lost souls that are still struggling. They're still on the edge of their seat, uh, trying to decide if they need to believe in God or not. Searching for something, something emptying in their lives, Father. That, that The tragedy that they've gone through in their lives. I pray for them, Father, that you find them in the place where they're at. And rescue them and deliver them, Father. Our children, our sons and daughters, our wives, our spouses, hallelujah, our grandchildren, Father. Find them all where they're at, oh God, hallelujah, and rescue them. Change their minds and their hearts, oh God. Father, I pray that you soften their heart and hearts because maybe their heart, their heart is hardened, Father. Maybe, Father, their heart is hardened and, need the, and, 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 and the Holy Spirit needs to soften it, Father. Father, all of us were once stubborn. All of us were once with, had hardened hearts, Father. But you have rescued us. You have changed our hearts. You have softened it, Father, to cause us to obey you, Father. And we pray for them, Father, for their salvation, for their deliverance, Father, for their spiritual and physical healing, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we praise you and we thank you, Father. And our hope, our hallelujah, our hope of glory only goes and comes to, and it is to Jesus Christ the Lord. We thank you, Lord, Father. In Jesus' name, we give you glory and we give you honor, Lord, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. When Jesus' name in the church says, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Those who have listened to today's message, God bless you. God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. I really believe that God will reach to people through the Facebook Live. Hallelujah. And change lives. Hallelujah. I pray that you will be saved. I pray that you will know the Lord Jesus Christ the way that we know him. Hallelujah. To truly have the joy and the peace that only Jesus can provide. Stop looking towards the peace and the joy that the world offers. And it does not last. Hallelujah. Because the, the people break in through breakthrough and steal and rob them. Amen. That's what the world offers. It's only temporary. And Jesus Christ is eternal. Eternal life. Hallelujah. So that's what I pray for you. In Jesus' name, we will see you next Sunday here on Pleasant Grove Church of God. Proceed. God bless somebody.